A bad example of a snack would be packaged pretzels or crackers because they contain a lot of fast-digesting carbohydrates that can raise blood sugar levels quickly and are frequently made with refined flour. In actuality, the carbohydrate content of these items may be higher than what is listed on the nutrition label because studies have shown that those snack items contain 10 times more carbohydrates than they advertise. It is best to consume a small amount of carbohydrates, such as a few low-carb vegetables with an ounce of cheese. The best sugar-sweetened beverages are those that aren't sweetened with sugar, like a 12-ounce can of cola, which has 40 grams of carbohydrates, making it extremely high in sugar. Since most diabetics stick to a maximum of 30 to 40 or 50 grams of carbohydrates per meal, depending on their gender and level of activity, 40 grams in a beverage is a lot. Another example of a sugar-sweetened beverage is iced tea or lemonade which has about 45 grams of carbohydrates per piece, a cup, or eight ounces of soda. In contrast, drinking water with a wedge of lemon has only one gram of carbohydrates and is practically calorie-free. For instance, apple juice has 25 grams of carbohydrates, and most of these are loaded with fructose syrup, which is linked to insulin resistance and diabetes. Studies actually suggest that people who consume these sugary beverages are more likely to develop fatty liver disease in addition to diabetes. Sugary drinks with a high fructose content can actually increase your triglyceride and cholesterol levels, which can lead to unwanted belly fat. These can all be quite harmful. A diet consisting of, say, 25 calories from high fructose beverages raises insulin resistance, increases belly fat, slows down metabolism, and ultimately leads to obesity and diabetes. It's best to completely avoid the sugary drinks to control blood sugar levels and reduce your risk of almost every disease you can imagine. Margarine and other synthetically produced trans fats are created by solidifying unsaturated fatty acids with hydrogen, a process that is extremely hazardous. Trans fats are present in peanut butter spreads, creamers, frozen dinners, and baked goods producers like those who create crackers or muffins. Preservatives are usually added by manufacturers to extend the shelf life of their products. Although trans fats do not directly raise blood sugar levels, they have been linked to higher levels of inflammation, insulin resistance, belly fat, lower levels of HDL cholesterol, an increase in cardiovascular risk, and of course, diabetes. So how can you tell if a product contains trans fats? If the ingredient list on the product label mentions partially hydrogenated, you should steer clear of white foods like pasta, rice, and bread because they are high in glycemic index. Therefore, individuals with type 1 and type 2 diabetes should abstain from eating bread, bagels, and all other products made with refined flour if their blood sugar is already elevated. This isn't just limited to products made with refined white flour. Researchers have also discovered that gluten-free pasta and other foods can elevate blood sugar levels. One study, for instance, found that people with type 2 diabetes who also had mental health issues had lower brain function after consuming foods high in carbohydrates. Now you know why people who are not very sharp are called breadheads, and as you know, Fiber lowers the risk of blood sugar spikes and other problems. Interestingly, Italians in Italy prepare food a little differently than Americans do. They use high-fiber foods, olive oil, and they actually move their booties to burn off the fat. As you are probably aware, replacing low-fiber foods with high-fiber ones will lower blood sugar levels. Diabetics will also undoubtedly notice a decrease in cholesterol because fiber binds cholesterol and reduces insulin resistance. What else does the high fiber content do well? It improves your gut flora, which is crucial for your overall health. Therefore, no matter how healthy they may seem, starting your day with cereal is one of the worst things you can do if you have diabetes. Most cereals are high in sugar and carbohydrates and low in protein, which is a nutrient that can help you feel full and satisfied for a long time and help maintain the stable blood sugar levels throughout the day for diabetics. Even healthy breakfast cereals are not the best choice, so steer clear of those. Granola, for instance, 
has 44 grams of carbohydrates in a half cup serving. Additionally, each serving of cereal contains no more than 7 grams of protein, so if you want to help control your blood sugar and curb your appetite, stick to a low carb, protein based breakfast instead of cereal. Now, fruits and berries are fine, but dried fruits are a different story. While fruits are great sources of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, dried fruits have a concentration of these nutrients because the water has been removed, which makes everything more concentrated. This also means that the sugar concentration in them increases. For instance, a cup of grapes contains 27 grams of carbohydrates, along with a small amount of fiber. However, a cup of raisins contains 145 grams of dried fruit which is significantly different. Therefore, if you are eating dried fruits, you should wash your portion thoroughly. If you are unable to control your portion, it is not worth it to eat the dried fruit at all. The raisins have four times the amount of carbohydrates as grapes, that's crazy. Some other dried fruits also have higher carb counts than regular fresh fruits, so stick with your fresh fruits. Fresh berries, peppers, pears, Oranges and other low-sugar fruits will help you lose weight and control your blood sugar levels, while drinking coffee has been linked to a lower risk of diabetes. Fancy coffee drinks, such as those found in the mighty Starbucks, should be considered a liquid dessert rather than a healthful beverage because the brain is not designed to handle liquids as well as solid foods. When you consume calories from beverages, you do not make up for it by eating less later, which could lead to weight gain. So avoid consuming beverages to obtain your calories. The flavored coffee drinks have a lot of carbohydrates. To give you an example, a 16-ounce caramel macchiato at Starbucks has about 60 grams of carbohydrates, while a blonde vanilla latte has about 30 grams in the same serving size. To keep your blood sugar under control and avoid weight gain, I would recommend choosing regular coffee or espresso with a tablespoon of heavy cream or half and half. However, keep in mind that people with diabetes must account for small blood sugar fluctuations because coffee's caffeine may raise adrenaline levels. After all is said and done, though, French fries may do far more harm than just raising blood sugar levels. It has been demonstrated that deep frying food produces dangerous substances called glycation end products and aldehydes at high concentrations. It is possible that these chemicals actually cause a lot of inflammation in your body and enhance the chance of getting sick. This is especially true in the mornings. Even if you do not have diabetes, you should avoid French fries because they have a high carbohydrate content to begin with. Although you can bake and eat potatoes in moderation, sweet potatoes are the best option if you don't want to completely give up potatoes. Studies have actually linked a high intake of fried foods such as French fries, to heart disease, and a number of other cancers. Parsnips correctly, so they're nice, here's the deal. If you love sweet potatoes, boil them for as long as you can because doing so will alter their chemical structure and prevent blood sugar spikes. Mesh parsnips taste and look like mashed potatoes, but have less carbohydrates. Indeed, as the boiling period increases, for instance, while boiling for 30 minutes, the sweet potatoes have a glycemic index of about 46. Boiled sweet potatoes have a low to medium glycemic index. However, after boiling them for just 8 minutes, their glycemic index drops to 61. Such a big change, yes, yogurt may be beneficial for diabetics. But when it comes to fruit-flavored varieties, it's a whole other story. Flavored yogurts are typically made with non-fat or low-fat milk, and contain a significant amount of carbohydrates and sugar. About 60% of the calories in a cup of a fruit-flavored yogurt come from sugar. Sounds crazy, but I'd much rather stick with my high-fat, creamy, plain Greek yogurt, of which Phage is my favorite brand because it's so creamy. Here's something else many people consider frozen yogurt to be a healthier option to ice cream, but it's possible that it has just as much sugar, if not more. So don't be fooled there. Instead, opt for plain whole milk yogurt instead of high sugar flavored yogurts, which can spike your blood sugar and insulin and damage everything from your gut health to your diabetes, cholesterol, and other health issues. 
Plain whole milk has a lot less sugar, even though it does contain some natural carbohydrates. It's also a lot better than flavored rums, which are almost as bad as white table sugar and similar to candies or cookies, which are all pretty much the same. Though they are slightly healthier than processed white sugars, these are still very concentrated sources of blood sugar, therefore avoid them. They are all instances of natural sugars and don't really contain much fiber. Thank you for watching this important video on how quitting certain foods can solve 90% of diabetes cases. We sincerely hope the material was enlightening and empowering for you. Remember, making small changes in your diet can lead to significant improvements in your health. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe to our channel, Health Angel Solutions, for more tips on living a healthier life. Together, we can make a difference.